Ifane ba machine. Thank you very much. Hi, my name is Wahine Yue Giftianti, author of A Bit of Me. A Bit of Me is my first book. But before I came out with this book, I'd been doing short videos, still with the same title, A Bit of Me, where I motivate and inspire people. The videos went very viral and lots of lives were touched. That pushed me to put those videos and um, articles I write and some new ones together to produce this book. This book is basically an inspirational and motivational book. And it's aimed at making sure that you get inspired to be the best version of yourself because everybody needs inspiration. No matter how powerful you are, no matter how rich you are, every now and then you get that, you know, low moment. And it's inspiration that will get you to pick yourself up to do what you love to do best, to, to, to push you to strive to achieve your goals and your dreams. So get a copy of A Bit of Me from any vendor near you. You can call 0543-618182. 0543-618182. And they will tell you where you can get a copy of A Bit of Me from a vendor near you. We have it in Koforidia, in Kumasi, in Obwasi, in Cape Coast, in Takrade, in Ho, in um, Accra, in Sunyain and so many other places. So call 0543-618182 and get your copy of A Bit of Me. And then, even if you think you don't need inspiration, please buy copies and send it to people who may need it. If you buy in bulk, you get a discount. When cleaning your vehicle by valeting, steaming, waxing, or polishing, make sure the engine is also sound. Servicing your vehicle with gold synthetic oil and any quality gold oil massages the engine, removes deposit, protects it from wear and tear for longer lasting performance, and makes your vehicle fuel pumped. Made for diesel and super engines. Remember, after every 15,000 kilometers of enjoying your ride, service your engine with Gold Synthetic Oil. Well, you're a champion. That's why I, Azuma Nelson, three times world boxing champion and a patriot, always choose Goel. Ashini Pankasa. Goel, good energy. We'd like to take a little message from our main speaker for today. He's in the person of Dr. Mustafa Abdul Hamid. Attack Bill. Attack Bill. Our Queen of Edumasa, Gifty Auntie, um, mothers, fathers, Muslim Jamaa, I greet all of you. In the greetings of Islam, saying Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. Um, now, compulsorily by force, Gifty Auntie has made me a member of her women's agenda, if you want. When she sends me these invitations, she doesn't ask me whether I am coming or I am not coming. She, would, she sent me a message and said, Sheikh, we are having the women's conference next Sunday. Um, we have done the banner. Please send your picture for us to put it on the banner. <laughs> so it, did, it meant that I didn't have a choice, isn't it? So I am here. The sacredness of the Muslim woman. Now, for us to understand what it is, then we must first understand the word sacred. What is sacred? And then we can then debate whether a woman is or should be sacred as far as Islam is concerned. 
Now, I will go to the opposite of what sacred is in order to be able to understand sacred. Now, in religious studies, the whole world is divided into what religious scholars call the sacred and the profane. In other words, all space is either sacred space or profane space. Now, the word profane is a Latin word. It comes from the Latin word profanus, which means outside the temple. Okay? So, therefore, what it means is that any other space inside the temple is sacred space. And what do we do in a temple? We worship. And therefore, it means that every space that is associated with God or that has God quality, by this gift, he is virtually asking us to argue whether woman has God quality. Okay? Now, she's not suggesting, in my view, that because woman has divine qualities or sacred qualities, man is not sacred in that sense. We are all made of God's sacred spark. But I would explain why and how a woman is different from a man. First of all, sacredness, like I was saying, means that the place has the qualities of God. Both in the Quran and the Bible, when Moses was called by God to go and collect, I think, the, the Ten Commandments, and then he was moving, and then all of a sudden, he heard a voice, according to both the Quran and the Bible, that said that he should stand where he is, or he should stop where he is, and therefore, that he should even take off his shoes. Because the Quran and the Bible say, because the, the place that you are about to step on now is sacred ground. So, do not come with your shoe. You are approaching a sacred place. So, it means that that which is sacred must have prohibitions around it. If, if something has no prohibitions, then it cannot be called sacred. Are, are we following me? So that is why when Muslims are going to pray, we can, we can pray here right now. If we decide that at Asr we are going to have congregational prayer in this room, suddenly this room assumes a sacred quality. So you will find that we will all then go out and take off our shoes before we come back in to pray. The same ground that was profane a few minutes ago assumes a sacred quality a few minutes later. But for it to assume that sacred quality, we must do certain things. Number one, we must take off our shoes. Number two, we should perform ablution. We should spread some mats, etc., etc. So there are certain things that we do to give it the sacred quality before we begin to pray. So sacredness has prohibitions. Or it has, if you want, do's and don'ts. Okay? So, how therefore is a woman sacred? In the Quran, when Allah talks about creation, in Quran chapter 4, verse 1 to 3, thereabouts, he says, Ya ayuhan nasu, taku rabakul lazi Halaka kum min nafsan wahida wa halaka minha zawjaha. And I want you to note zawjaha for those who understand Arabic. He says, O oh people, fear your Lord who created you from a single soul. The word for soul in Arabic is nafs. He created you from a single soul. And created from that soul her mate. He created from the original soul her mate. Not his mate or its mate. 
So the soul from which we are all animated is feminine. That's what Allah means. The soul is feminine. And to back it up, look at Quran 89. I think that's Fajr. It says, Ya ayuhan nafsu mutma'inna irji'i ila rabbiki. Ko? Ila rabbiki. Again, you soul at peace. Return to your Lord. And Allah addresses the soul in feminine. But that soul refers to all human soul. But Allah says it should return to her Lord. So me, Abdul Hamid Mustafa, the soul that animates me and animates Imam Nuruddin, even though he's called male, the soul that exists in him is feminine. So, you will find that in the Quran. So now we are told in the Quran and the Bible that this first creation, even though it was male, that it was called Adam, that the soul that animated it, according to Allah himself, was feminine. Okay? And it makes a lot of sense. It makes a lot of sense because this, single, this soul, which was masculine, didn't have the capacity to replicate, to replicate other souls. It was just there. Until Allah created the like. And when you, when you extend the same surah to the service, and further he says, and, from, and then he created it, her, her maid, and from the two of them, he then created countless human beings. But the first creation was incapacitated to be able to procreate until the second one came. So woman is the essence. It gives life to creation. And since Allah is the creator, and remember in Surah Al-Baqarah also, Allah tells the angels that I am about to create and put on earth someone who shall be my deputy. Okay? So in other words, I am about to create human beings. So as human beings, we are deputies of what? Of God. Okay? Now, if it is a woman who is a less instrument of creation, it means that the woman shares more of Allah's sacredness than man. And it is not also difficult to prove why. You see, the first sentences that every Muslim recites in doing every venture, whether they are going to eat, they are going to do anything, is Bismillah, Rahman, Rahim. Bismillah Rahman Rahim. Bismillah Rahman Rahim. If you are going to play football, if you are going to, to sit on your desk, whatever. Every day, every Muslim says Bismillah Rahman Rahim. Now, and if you if you see the arrangement of the so-called ninety-nine names of God, and I say so-called because I believe that God's names are in the millions. They are just not ninety-nine. But let's see <laughs> that. <laughs> let's, for the purposes of this function, let's say that the 99 names of God. Now, if you arrange the 99 names of God, the first one they say is Allah, Ar Rahman, Ar Rahim, Al Maliki, Kudus, Salam, Mu'min, Muhaymin, Azizu, Jabaru, etc., etc. Okay? Now, the first one, apart from the name Allah, the next most valuable and powerful name of God is Rahman. Now, where does Rahman come from? Rahman, the root of Rahman is Raham. And that exactly is the name of womb in Arabic. So, Rahman also embodies God's creation. 
Now, between these species of humans, male and female, who has a womb? Are you, are you following me? So, woman is sacred. Woman is God's instrument of creation. Now, I'm going back again to the Adam story. So, when God created Adam, you see, when I say Adam, the majority of you, or perhaps even all of you, will be thinking of an individual human being who is alleged to be the first creation. But, you see, if you read the Quran, there are 25 mentions of the word Adam in the Quran, 25 times. Out of that 25 times, only three times does it refer to one human being. All the other times, the 22 times that Allah uses Adam in the Quran, he refuses it to refer to all human beings, male and female. So, when the Quran says, Allah said to the angels, prostrate before Adam, he was asking them to prostrate to his humanness. Because he has already told them, I am creating somebody who will be my word, deputy. So, for example, every time the president travels, he, he writes and tells us Ghanaians that he has traveled. And therefore, the vice president deputizes for him, isn't it? So, at that point... All of the reverence that we give to the president of the republic, at that point, all those privileges and rights and responsibilities and everything are conferred automatically onto the vice president. Is that not the case? So if Allah says, I am creating somebody who shall be my deputy, because I, Allah, I am spirit. I am not going to dwell on earth. I am not going to have a physical existence on earth. Therefore, the ones that will be physically representative of, of me are human beings. And therefore, prostrate before them. Because they have power. You angels, you don't have power. You do only one thing. You are, you are robots. But human beings are not robots. They have will. They have willpower. They, they even have a right to disobey me as indeed the majority of human beings today are disobeying Allah. So it is not easy to have a power of disobedience. So because of that power that humans, that soul that I have created has, Allah tells the angels, prostrate. Now, we Muslims say that only Allah is worth prostrating to. But he himself, on this occasion, gives permission to other creatures to prostrate before us. So that shows that we too have the sacred spark of Allah. That is why we are also deserving of prostration from the angels. Now, this woman or soul that Allah creates in us, Allah then creates her mate, and from her mate, we all are replicated. But biologically, the human species is then made into male and female. And Allah chooses the female as a special instrument or vehicle for not only his procreation, or the ensuring that the human race continues to exist. But even Islam, when Allah was about to establish Islam, and we Muslims say that um, Islam is the universal religion. We believe that all of the prophets of Allah practice what? Islam. Because Islam simply means submission to the will of Allah. Now, when Allah was about to establish Islam, and the angel encountered the prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, 
And then he came home and narrated his experience to his wife, Khadija. The scholars tell us that even the prophet was so shaking that he was unsure what it was. But with the guidance of Khadija, the prophet was taken to the monk, Bahira, and then he was told about prophethood and how all Allah had foretold his coming, and etc., etc. And through the instrumentality of Khadija, he was relieved of all his worldly problems, which Allah himself refers to in the Quran. And says, did we not find you, oh Muhammad, did we not find you poor and enrich you? Of course, everybody knows that the way that Allah enriched the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was through the wealth of Khadija. So, the instrumentality of a woman in the establishment of Islam is stated. It's not arguable. Now, when the prophet himself established the deen and began to preach Islam, he also continued to place premium. And mind you, the prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam does not speak or say or do anything except according to divine revelation. So the prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam tells us that woman is the essence and the spring of paradise. So that's why he says to us that paradise lies under the feet of, of the mothers or of our mothers. And that is why Dr. Nabil said, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam admonished somebody that reverence your mother. And he says, and who? And reverence your mother. And he says, and who? And he says, reverence your mother. It was only at the fourth instance that he says, and reverence your father too. Are you following me? And therefore, almost all of the things that we have to do to attain paradise have to be associated with woman. So the prophet says, even in learning our religion, at least the Sunnis judge the hadith to be authentic, that the prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, learn half of your religion from Aisha. From a woman. Not Abu Bakr, not Osman, not anybody. Half of the religion, 50% of your religion, learn it from Aisha. That's number one. The Shias also make woman the fountain of their knowledge of Islam, which is also Fatima. So whether you are Sunni or you are Shia, the source of your inspiration and knowledge should be woman. And that underlines the sacredness of woman. And of all the activities, you remember again another hadith in which the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa said, anybody who is able to take care of two daughters and take care of them so well till adulthood and marry them off, that fellow will be closest to me like this in paradise. Just merely taking care of two daughters. And the questioner said, but ya Allah, eh, ya Rasul, if somebody has just one daughter, and he said, even one daughter. Now why? Why hasn't he talked about male children? And he says, if you are able to take care of a, a female child, basically, and then you take care of her so well. In other words, you give her proper moral training, you raise her in the way of Allah, and then you marry her off. That alone, one daughter guarantees you paradise. And not just in some remote part of paradise, at the place where the prophet sits. Why? Because the woman, the female, the girl that you have given birth to is sacred. That is why devotion and attention to her attains you paradise. Because you attain paradise not by doing profane things, but by doing sacred things. So now I have established that woman is indeed sacred. Now 
I'm going to explain to you, therefore, that if woman is sacred, as I have already ex- explained in the case of the haram and the rest of them, then there must be prohibitions around her. And that is why we talk about the veil. The veil from its creation by human civilizations has been associated with women who are special. So it's always been a symbol, a marker of perfection. Now what happened? In the time of the prophet, Islam came and it was not an Islamic symbol yet. And then one day, Sayyidina Umar went out at night and encountered one of the wives of the prophet called Sauda and didn't recognize her. I think according to some of the hadiths, he almost insulted her or something to that effect. And so when he realized that it was Sauda, he was very remorseful. So the next day, he went to the prophet and said, look, I wish we would also institute the veil for your women, for your wives initially, so that they stand out and then we know that these are the mothers of the faithful. And so, later on, an ayah came that established the veil for the wives of the prophet only, initially. Now, later on, then Allah said to the prophet that, tell your wives, and now also all believing women, that they should veil. And the Quran, Surah Al-Ahzab 59 says, so that they will be known. To be known means to be set apart, so that you will be seen. And then the, the ayah also say, so that they are not molested. So when somebody sees you wearing the veil, it becomes a symbol of sacredness. You become inviolable. Nobody can violate you. The Quran says, so that they will not be touched. Or the other translation says, they will not be molested. Somebody sent me a video of a news item on Joy TV where now Christian girls are learning to veil. It was on Joy News. And they said that they like it because when they veil, they are respected. People now see them as special people. They are not touched and molested the way that they molest them when they are not veiled. It's on, it's on joy. And so that tells you that gradually and gradually and gradually, Allah himself, who has made you sacred, would help to establish the reason why you are inviolable. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. Thank you very much. We are sponsored by GTP, Quality Insurance Company, Go Girl Policy, Quality Insurance Company. Now our media partners are Joy Prime, Praise TV, The Finder, The New Crusading Guide, Ghana Web, Rainbow Radio 87.5, Accra 100.5 FM, Class 91.3 FM, Top FM 103.1, Joy FM, and Onya FM. We are supported by Tell It Moms, House of Food, Juice Times, Cake Techniques International, EKGS, Mawood Drinkables, Awake Purified Drinking Water, Casapreco Royal Drinks, Green Essentials, Kodam Gifts and Stationery, Print Marketing, BSL Clothing, Sana Sobolo, Marimat Kitchen and Events Ghana, Gogot Yogurt by Penta Foods, and PZ Cousins. Now we move to the next item on the agenda, 
which is unveiling action of books. And this is going to be done by Hamza Obin Atagbe. We thank God Almighty Allah for today. Before we proceed, I'll call Oheni Gutiyanti and our main speaker for the day, that's Honorable Dr. Mustafa Hamid, to unveil the books for us. Honorable. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. In the name of Allah, the Beneficent, the Merciful. This is a bit of me. A bit of me. I will pay for the kinti and I'll pay for the book as well. So that one, don't worry. I am not the auctioneer, but the only thing I can say is that when the auctioneer is auctioning, try and buy. And from here, wherever you go, buy books. Because like somebody said, half of books, when you die, your children may not kill each other over books. <laughs> if, you, if you use your money to buy cars and this and that, when you die, there will be confusion behind you. There will be fitna. But after of books, I'm not sure that they are going to fight at all. So if you want peace after you are dead, please buy books. Thank you very much. <laughs> Attack me! Attack me! Each person is going to take a book. So I'll start with no other person than the National General Secretary of Ghana Muslim Mission. Dr. Nadu Miyama, take the third one. Atabir. Well, thank you very much for um, buying the book so far. This book is written, part of the money goes into the Girl in Need Foundation. We are going to reading project. So we set up libraries for them and we give them some books as well. That also goes into it. So that is why we are pleading with you to patronize the book. The book will inspire you. It will encourage you to be the better version of yourself. We just want to say thank you to Cake Technique. So I will invite Madam Chairperson. I invite my brother, Dr. Honorable Dr. Mustafa Hamid, my brother, Dr. Nabir, to join us and our uh, Imam, regional Imam, to join us here to cut the standpoints anniversary cake. Please join us here. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. We are going to cut this cake not only to honor standpoint, not only to celebrate standpoint, but for the sacredness of the Muslim woman. And for Ohene Yiri to believe so much in herself so as to inspire all of us. We are grateful to Allah for this to happen. And I believe, and I want you to note it, because we have to copy what she has said in the book to make her who she is today. Our vision is telling us to be very disciplined, well-educated, and healthy. And I believe that she has touched all that in her book. Alhamdulillah, we give praise to you. And can we cut the cake now? Atakbir. Atakbir. Congratulations. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you so much. Today, being our Imam's birthday, my own father, he's my brother, he's my father, he's my everything. We decided that we are going to shock him small. Are we ready? 
Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Oh, fine. This is my friend, my sister. She's called Rachel Ajari. She's a cake. Um, she specializes in doing these special cakes. I told her just three days ago, and she said she would do it. She turned up with this amazing cake. Please put your hands together for her. Um, are we ready to pop the champagne? He's a jolly good fellow. He's a jolly good fella. Esto says all of us. Hip, hip, hip. I've been thrilled by this, and I never expected this. Once again, I want to thank you all. But it is my fervent prayer that this should be a base for me to continue to serve my creator. Thank you so much. We have this parcel for you as well. <laughs> Thank you so much. We of the standpoint, we believe in celebrating people at the appropriate time. When the person is doing well, you encourage the person to keep on doing well by celebrating the person. If the person is lacking, you encourage the person, not always criticizing and um, trying to talk down on the person, but we must always encourage each other. So this is just to celebrate our father, the original imam, for what he's doing, the stories we hear about him, it's not just because it is Giftianti and the standpoint that he's doing all this for us, but that is who he is, and that is what he does. So may we all emulate him and live by his example. Atabir. Hi, my name is Wahine Yue Giftianti, author of A Bit of Me. A Bit of Me is my first book, but before I came out with this book, I'd been doing short videos, still with the same title, A Bit of Me, where I motivate and inspire people. The videos went very viral and lots of lives were touched. That pushed me to put those videos and um, articles I write and some new ones together to produce this book. This book is basically an inspirational and motivational book and it's aimed at making sure that you get inspired to be the best version of yourself because everybody needs inspiration no matter how powerful you are no matter how rich you are every now and then you get that you know low moment and it's inspiration that will get you to pick yourself up to do what you love to do best to 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 push you to strive to achieve your goals and your dreams. So get a copy of A Bit of Me from any vendor near you. You can call 0543-618182. 0543-618182. And they will tell you where you can get a copy of A Bit of Me from a vendor near you. We have it in Koforidia, in Kumasi, in Obwasi, in Cape Coast, in Takrade, in Ho, in um, Accra, in Sunyaing and so many other places. So call 0543 618182 and get your copy of A Bit of Me. And then, even if you think you don't need inspiration, please buy copies and send it to people who may need it. If you buy in bulk, you get a discount. We have all learned so much. Haven't we? And I'm trying to summarize it in three sentences. But before I do that, I want to congratulate Ghana Muslim Mission for actually standing by or Hineire Gifti Auntie. And 
you know, you couldn't have chosen a better theme than what you have chosen for this occasion today. The reason for me is embedded in your mission. So that's the first summary. So I'm going to refer all of us back to the vision of the Ghana Muslim mission. They want to have well-educated, disciplined, healthy Muslim community who shall live by the Holy Quran and the Sunnah of our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in order to contribute to the development of Ghana. What a good vision for any Muslim to emulate and see genital fiddles because that is our ultimate success, isn't it? So Alhamdulillah, and everything that has happened today is embedded in that vision. I am very happy because I have learned. Indeed, I didn't realize, I couldn't have, I couldn't have said it better than Sheikh said, that the woman is the soul with all the proof from the Quran. At least, Quran chapter 4 tells us or proves that what he's saying is the truth. And if you look at it, that is why motherhood is what is so, so important. I believe our non-Muslim brothers and sisters also learned, and that is the last summary I'm given, that the reason we wear the veil makes us so, so special, so, so important to believe in ourselves, to be who we want. In fact, to, be, to have an identity. I believe in, in, the, in today's marketing to have a brand. And having a brand, at least, is one of the success stories of successful people. So indeed, come out and be so, because you are expected to be successful. Indeed, I'm personally grateful to all of you for being supportive to see this to a successful conclusion. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. Thank you very much, our chairperson. The program has indeed been successful. We now take the vote of thanks by Kauta Khamis. Salaamu Alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. I've been asked to do just the vote of thanks, so I'll do it very quick on the high table first. I have two in-laws on the high table. One is aware, the other is not, and it's the Honorable Minister. My husband happens to be uh, from, he comes from Dagbon, and so I would say, Naoni De Sulugo, may Allah richly bless you. For our host, Ghana Muslim Mission, you have a special place in my heart and it's because of Dr. Rabia Tuama. She's my mother, she's my mentor, she's everything. So from the chief imam of the Ghana Muslim Mission to the secretary to everybody, our mothers, our sisters who are here, I say, Nyungbo Ajonye Wadenche. To our Manyetu, Nana, thank you so, so much for being here with us. As for my big sister, Ohini, you know, I had a special prayer for her from the first time I, I went to her program. And that was somewhere um, back in 2011. And it was that she should marry a sheikh, a big sheikh. Because it looks like she has a special place for Muslims on her program. But Ohini came in. And I thank you very much. You have not separated her from us. So I know that tomorrow at dawn in Edumasa, you would hear the Azan. And once you hear the Muazin says, Allahu Akbar, this is coming from all of us, from the bottom of our hearts. The Azan, we are using the Azan to tell you that we are so grateful. Thank you so, so much, and may Allah continue to bless you. So to all 
all of us who are here, thank you for coming. Salamu alaikum.